Hi, my name is Jason Morgan. I'm a professional artist. Welcome into my studio. Today I'm going to be showing you uh, just a brief overview of how I draw or painted in pastels this white wolf, very detailed, realistic. And if you want a real long version, it's about one and three quarter hours over on my Patreon channel. So this is going to be more of a brief overview showing the techniques I use to complete it. Okay, on to the drawing and as usual, I'm using a dark grey pastel mat. My drawing is already on there. This is the reference I'm going to work from. So you can see I've got these colours down by the side that I showed you on the print earlier on. So I'll be using that by my side and don't forget you can use those drag out colours then to kind of select the colours you want for your base tones. Here I've got my pan pastels out. But remember for the undertones, as I've shown on many of my videos now, alternative ways, you're going to go buy in all the supplies I've built up over the last 18 months. So instead of pan pastels, you could be using Conti sticks, especially for this subject, they would be good. Soft pastels, you could also be just doing it with pencils as well. So any real alternative would work. As we just get a base down. So here's my pan pastel tools. I've got some kitchen tissue. You can use those little shovel tools. You've got these sponges you can use. These are a bit more hard wearing. And just to clean them, because a few people have asked how do you clean them, all I do is just gently rub them on some kitchen roll, some kitchen tissue, and that gets 18-90% of it off. I'm not going too hard. I'm turning it over to get it off all the edges as well. If you want to get them really clean, obviously you could you could uh, put them in some water and wash them that way. That'll give much more thorough cleaning. I think on the Pan Pastel website, no doubt they've got information on there about cleaning these small sponges. No matter how many pastels you build up in your collection, you're never going to get every one of these colours. There's always going to be subtle shades. And you can mix, especially with Pan Pastels, you can mix the colours yourself. So here I'm taking out some colour, putting them onto just some normal printer paper, assessing whether the colour needs to be perhaps a bit more purple in there or lighter or darker. And you can see I can add, it's not white at the top, that's a very very light pink and I'm adding that to lighten the colours up. And you can see how much closer then I'm getting to those colours on the wolf. Much much closer and it comes from the set. You see I can add a bit of brown to it, lighten that and make it a bit warmer perhaps. So you can really adjust it with these pans. They're very good for that and we can also do it to an extent with soft pastels as well. But you'd be doing more of the blending actually on the paper instead of on a separate sheet of paper such as this. So now you can see how I make those slight adjustments for colours got my reference photo to the left of me, the closer you can get that to your work the better. The reason I'm using a grey background or a mid-tone background because that's more important is because especially with white subjects you're not going to want to do them on white paper because that's going to make judging all the colours and the tones especially difficult and that's the reason I use toned paper. Going in that third direction now all the time. It's not critical to be exactly right but you know just in the general direction. Not going too light on the highlights, not going too dark really on the darks. Most of the real black blacks like around the eyes I'll be using pastel pencils and then of course I'll be going over this all with pastel pencils as well to put the details on top. So I need to go a bit darker on this bottom section. Don't forget all the pastels can be mixed together. So if you've got soft pastel sticks, you can apply them with the pan pastels, over the pan pastels, under it, and vice versa. You can put the pan pastels down or the soft sticks down, and then you can use the pan pastel applicators to move them around. Really doesn't matter. In all of the pastels, we can um, use the full array that we build up over time and they will all uh, be able to be used together so that's, that's nice to know that we haven't got to collect whole sets of um, various supplies. 
So I'm blocking in the basic dark colour here. And I'll then start smoothing it out, blending it in more. Very light strokes. Still concentrating on going pretty much in a fur direction. Even when I'm doing these blocking in stages. And you can see so far I've used no white at all. Now popping in the very black pupil, so I've come back to that Karen Dash. We're getting a black and a white in that make at least, because they are darker and lighter than the other colours. So I always get a white in that if I want a super white of a highlight somewhere. And a little bit of this blue just above the pupil, so that's that reflected area of the sky coming down onto the eye itself going a little bit lighter because some blue in the eye usually makes the eye look even more real so even if it's not in your reference or if it's in the reference such as this I can make it just a bit bluer just to boost that effect and now when I come in with that bright white so that Karen Dash white I just touch it onto the surface and all of a sudden the eye starts to look glassy, starts to look reflective, wet and have life in it. And now I can just come in with a grey pencil, put this highlight that's on the bottom lid, making that look that bit wetter. Now I have switched to a different pencil, a darker pencil, because this whole section of the head is in shadow. So you can see I'm doing fairly long strokes, really being critical now where that direction of my pencil is going. And I will put lighter tones on top of this again. I want to build up those layers that's going to build up the depth of the fur and give you that realistic appearance so you don't want to go to the brightest areas or the brightest pencils in your first layer we need to build up on that here I'm just adding some glazes so you can see I can darken an area without wiping away and disturbing too much of that under detail just using the pencil barely touching the surface but it is making a difference. The whiskers need to be very fine so I need a really sharp pencil so as usual I'm dragging out a polychrome moss coloured pencil just for this stage nowhere else because I want these whiskers not to be thick at all they need to be really quite fine. So I hope you found this quick overview video of some use. As I mentioned, if you want to see a one and three quarter hour version of this and many, many hours of lots of other pastel, oil, graphite, other medium videos, they're over on my Patreon art channel. Many hundreds following me on there now. I'd love to see you there. See you all again real soon. If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel that's been going well over a year or so, packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, is on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group so only the members are actually on there it's the most supportive and friendly facebook group that i've ever seen i know i'm biased but it really is we've got uh, four or five hundred members on there and they all help each other so that's a great added bonus that comes free with it also you get line art every month as well and we've just designed a brand new companion website for it so if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very very difficult to navigate around we got this free website that comes with it all the videos are now just a single click away couldn't be any easier than it is 
I've also got my site jasonmorgan.co.uk lots of tutorial videos DVD discs and downloads on there and if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects I've got some of those too I've got 900 plus on my website wildlifeart-online.com and they will be copyright free for you so you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever so hope you like those extra resources and i'll see you all again real soon